Hey everybody, Mental Fox here. Welcome back to Starfield. We're on board the Vigilance here, and we're we're I guess we're a member of the Crimson Fleet now. Undercover, that is. And we're doing a quest. Uh it's called Rook Meets King. Uh Neva Mora will meet me at the Key, the Crimson Fleet's headquarters in the Crick system. So we're gonna travel to the Key, but before we do that, I wanna have a quick talk with uh Lieutenant Toft because we did pick up some evidence and um, I don't see why we can't go ahead and give it to her now. So uh, let's do that. We don't have a full map of the fleet's roster. The members change too quickly. Oh yeah. Been trying for years to get someone on the inside. And now we have it. Now you have it. As a member of the Crimson Fleet, you'll get a unique view into their operations. Make sure to spare no detail in your reports. Okay. Hey, I was wondering, why is it called the Crix system? The system was originally called Alpha Ophiuchi until a flag was planted there by Jasper Crix, the founder of the Crimson Fleet. Since it was crucial that space travelers avoided that system, navigators marked it as Crix on star maps as a warning. They could have just as easily labeled it Crimson Fleet. <laughs> I'm guessing the pirates themselves were responsible for spreading their leader's name. Over the years, People forgot the system's original designation and started calling it the Crick system. It's been that way ever since. Hmm, okay. Do you have any detailed information about the Crimson Fleet? Sure. We have a database of profiles you can read, which should help you ingratiate yourself with the group. However, the profiles are a guide, not gospel. Use what you can, fill in the blanks, and play off that. I imagine when you're done, You'll be able to generate far more accurate profiles than what we have in our system. Okay. Um, you mentioned the Vigilant is upgrading its shielding. That's right. It's something we've requested a while ago in preparation for a future conflict with the fleet. Once we finalize everything and run a few tests, we'll have the defenses needed for a jump to the Crick system when the time comes. Okay. Um, why hold prisoners aboard the Vigilance when you could send them directly to prison? Two reasons. First, Commander Akande is playing this operation extremely close to the vest. That means keeping prisoners under his own roof until this is resolved. Second, this is an undercover mission. For our safety and yours, we need to keep these prisoners out of the spotlight. Okay. So, uh, I have some evidence for you. Good. The more you find, the stronger our case. Okay. Um, uh, you might want to raise the alarm at Hopetown? Okay, don't remember what that is. The fleet's planning a raid on Hopetown? Okay. I didn't expect them to be so bold, but I suppose desperate times call for desperate measures. Don't worry. I'll circulate the description of this captain to the authorities on Hopetown and make sure they never set foot in that settlement. Find anything else? I guess that was some evidence we picked up a while back. Uh, I don't remember that. Uh, but we did discover some information about Adler Kemp. Interesting. Looks like he's been meeting up regularly with Neva Mora to transfer goods and cash from Sidonia. Which means the Crimson Fleet's just lost one of their drop points. <laughs> that should set them back a bit. Anything else? Oh, uh, that's all I have for now. Understood. Keep searching and you're bound to find more. Okay. Good luck on the key. Thanks. So she mentioned that there's like Don't a database somewhere with information about the Crimson Fleet. I wouldn't mind taking a look at that. Let's see here. Um, any new quests? Uh, no, I don't see any. But she did say something about a database. So where is a computer terminal? that I could use. Are you using the computer? Hey, do you mind? <laughs> Just push that person out of the way. Uh, well, there's Phobos and then there's ship information. This is not the database we're looking for, I don't think. Where do you think that would be? I'll check this out. is the heart and soul of UC I'd follow him to the ends of the galaxy. Would it be on the bridge? I don't think it would be. Where, where would it be? Uh, I mean, hmm. Well. Well, Mr. Hey. That's good. She's talking to the turret. 
Um, I don't know. Let's see what's out here. I don't know what this is. Cool, the bridge. Some fans around here. I still don't buy it, though. The act. Have we talked to that Alex guy before? Have I been on the bridge before? I don't know if I have been. I don't know. This kind of looks familiar. See all that chest candy on Commander Ikande? That means he's seen some shit. Hey, are you pointing that gun at me? What are you doing? Where it goes, fleet run. Back in basic training, I have the record for fleet kills. Excuse me. Let's talk to this guy. Mole. Mole. Try not to forget who you are, okay? Okay. It didn't break the commander's heart to have to hunt you down. So we've already talked to him. All right. Be careful you do not trap mud on the floors. You would not wish to tarnish this hospitable environment. You met Archangel? That guy's a real cocky bastard. Glad he's on our side, though. Archangel? I can't say I remember. I decided to transfer to system. Your fees are a real problem. Um. I saw one of the Well. Well, I tell you what, these people here on this bridge sure do like to talk a lot. <laughs> right when she says shuts you up, that's funny. Um, this is uh, Commander's office terminal. Uh, I'm pretty sure we already read these from before. Yeah, okay. Wait a minute. Combat Tech Catalog 2 further increases the range and accuracy of Combat Tech weapons. Well, I'm going to take it. I don't know if I ever remember seeing any Combat Tech weapons. Okay, hello. Okay, hello. Well, here's the lift. I guess we'll just go back to the docking bay and get the heck out of here. What the heck was she talking about her database, though? I don't know. I feel like I already looked around and I didn't see it. Docking ports, brig. Can't go that way. Once I get time off, that's the first place I'm jumping. You do that. The fleet killed a buddy of mine. Pretty sure these are just yeah, docking port computers. Uh docking port computer. Yeah, that's all these are. Storage. Yes. Can't go that way. Whoa, whoa. Calm down. Okay, so this is the brig. As a former convict, you've seen the inside of a cell. Stay out of mine and we'll get along just Brig protocols, okay. I already saw that stuff. Yeah, we already looked around the brig, I remember this. All right. Well, let's get the heck out of here, I guess. Good day, Captain. Good day. We'll go straight to the cockpit. Or are there other matters that require your attention? No, oh, we're out of here. We're free and clear for flight. Okay, well, let's um head to the Crix system. Crix. Let's go. What's the worst that could happen? Here we are. Suvorov. Key location discovered. Is 
So, let's see. There's the key. I guess that's where we're going. Should we hail him? Nobody hails the key. <laughs> do your business. Nobody hails the key. Just do your business. Okay. Fine. I'll dock with the key. <laughs> Nobody hails the key. Thanks. Check out my inventory situation here. I think I'm fine. Yeah, I'm not carrying any weapons I don't need. What's this new item I'm carrying? Oh, the Combatech catalog, yes. Well, let's go ahead and board this ship. Whatever this thing is, our current quest now says Neva Mora will meet me at the key, the Crimson Fleet's headquarters in the Crix system. Okay, let's go, uh, let's go have a little talk. You got your cut, now get out of my face. You said the dig was 10k, but it was 30. Big difference Hello. on 40% of 10 versus 30. You wanted 4K, you got 4K. Not my problem. If you're stealing from me, you bet your ass it's your problem. Oop, okay. <laughs> you kidding me? Captain I don't make Fox, a mess in front breathe. of my new world. Hey, steal from me and get caught. Better off dead. Sounds like you did the fleet a favor. Now toss this body out of an airlock before it turns into a damn air freshener. Wow. <laughs> he just walks away. He's like, screw you, lady. Can I loot this guy? Yeah. Did they have anything of value? Uh, it's some ammo. So, you must be Neva Mora. What the hell took you so long? Forget how to grab jump or something? Uh, why did you miss me? Job's done and I'm here, so back off. I had my own affairs to deal with, or I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, they're talking about how bad and temperamental she is and everything, but pff, doesn't scare me. However, that um, dude whose name I can't remember back in uh, the Broken Spear in Sidonia was like, you don't mess with her. So let's, let's not mess with her. Sorry I kept you waiting. Never apologize. <laughs> Not if you want anyone in the fleet to respect you. And if they don't respect you, put a gun to their head and they'll get the message. But, all that aside, you made it. So now, you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Key. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now... It's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. Mm-hmm. The Crimson Fleet took over an entire UC Star Station? Sure did. Right out from under their noses. Way before you or I were born, though. We've held this station for a very long time. Don't worry. Delgado will tell you all about it. Okay. I bet it really pisses the UC off that you're stationed here. <laughs> you think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. But I can give you the short version while we walk the station. It must be very embarrassing for the UC to be in this situation. Anyway, <laughs> I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you too. Follow me. Okay, follow Neva. Uh, I met Neva Mora at the Key, the Crimson Fleet's headquarters in the Crick system. All right, history time. So, the Key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison. Lock, key, uh, cute, huh? Nope. Oh. I, 
guess we're going to the cargo bay. Jeez, clean this place up, you slobs. Now, we've got everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are king. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction. You know, that thing I spend most of my day dealing with. Believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, neighbor. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Aludra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Rook. Or you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just whining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Crix had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuro amps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. On the right, you've got Bradley from the Trade Authority. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you know? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Bog serves watered down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Core, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Ray? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, 
I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Uh, whoops. How is a bomb in your chest empowering? I see the bomb as a symbol of my importance, and it's a constant reminder to everyone of the sacrifice I was willing to make. The freedom I've given up, the pain, it's not something that just anyone has the resolve to bear. He is right. The pain he endures is proof of his loyalty and his resolve. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's going to get infected. I'd say that was a bit extreme. Just set me up so I could start making money. Or we could use our security uh, knowledge to say this. I don't know, man. I think that's going to get infected. That's amusing. I don't think I've heard that one before. <laughs> oh, wait. Yes, I have. You might as well dispense with all the stupid jokes. I've been hearing them for years. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. Uh, so one wrong move, you're dead, or I don't think I can make a sacrifice like that, or I bet you don't get out much, or Delgado sounds like a smart man. Uh, I mean, is it like really one wrong move and you're dead? Essentially, but I sleep soundly knowing I'm one of the few that can piss Delgado off and live. Should I die, all of my knowledge, the accounts, the credits, it would be a mess. He wouldn't dare. He holds the trigger, but we all know that my death cripples the fleet. Call the bomb a weapon of last resort. Okay. Well, um, I bet you don't get out much. It's been over five years since I've stepped off the key. Leaving this place puts far too much at risk. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications, even Ryujin would envy. I can interface if directly with the online time, frame and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run of the mill cyber runner. There, you're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. Uh huh. Any other modifications I need to know about? None. Other than my chest and arm modifications, I am but a simple man. Is the interview over now? <laughs> Can we get back to work? Um... I mean, time to make those credits. The perfect segue into my final subject. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. Uh, what kind of jobs? Oh, you know, smuggling, piracy, taking things that aren't yours. Nothing that should keep you up at night. Well, depending on your methods. Um, let's see. Just tell me we're officially done here. I'm not interested in small jobs, or it sounds like we'll be doing a lot of business together. Yeah, I'm not too interested in small jobs, dude. Fine by me. There's plenty of others who do. You do less, you make less. It's a pretty simple equation. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. I he just were just pets. All right, listen Never up. considered you trying to raise one as a pet. Atrium to Imagine cargo having your own terror Oh, and you're welcome, Nev. Okay, everybody talk at the same time. So, now our quest says, Having finished my tour of the key, I need to meet with Delgado, the leader of the Crimson Fleet. But... As with all of my, always a healthy source uh, of income. All of my companions, their timing is impeccable, and Andreja waits until we're undercover, 
on a pirate ship before she decides that she wants to have a talk with me. So Andresia, um, I, mean, I don't know if there's like a like a little private area where we could go talk. We could pl talk over here by the garbage. Uh, let's come over here and talk. Andresia, come over here. Let's let's. Uh, what is it that you want to talk about? Whoa. I have something I wanted to say, but I confess I am afraid of how you will react. Uh huh. I'd rather talk about this later. The only thing that matters to me is that I can count on you. Nothing would change my opinion of you, or if it's that bad, maybe you shouldn't say anything. Um, I mean, I don't know. I guess nothing would change my opinion of you. I am reluctant to put that to the test. But it is necessary that we are honest with each other. You told me that you believe in going it alone, as you put it. But we have traveled together for a while now. I feel I must honor that time with the truth. The little I have spoken of my history has been nothing but truth. I worked with smugglers. I have caused my share of pain and suffering. What I have left out until now is that all of that was done on behalf of House Varun. My people. My family. Uh-huh. House Varun, what's that? You have not heard the name? <laughs> I am surprised. Generations ago, our founder, Jinan Varun, he... he had an experience while grab-jumping. He made contact with an immortal being beyond time and space, beyond our universe. The Great Serpent told Jinan Varun that our universe is his dominion. And while he has been away for millennia, he will return soon. And when he does, we must be prepared. My people have worked to that end for many years now, and it has caused conflict with the rest of the settled systems. Mm hmm. Explain to me how this makes any sense. So you're a member of that cult. I thought House Varun had vanished, or if that were coming from anyone else, I'd think it was a joke. So how does my character feel about House Varun? Um, I, I, you know, growing up in the streets of Neon, House of Varun, probably, he probably didn't really come in contact with them much. Probably didn't really hear much about him. Probably doesn't have much of an opinion about him at all. As a matter of fact, he might be a perfect candidate for conversion to the house, to House of Varun. Um, maybe he feels like he wants to be a part of something. And... I think that he kind of likes Andresia. Um, I'm quiet. <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, I think he probably likes her, maybe fancies her a bit. And he's like, okay, fine. So you're part of House Varun. So what? But uh, I, I did think that House Varun had vanished. They have retreated from open relations with the United Colonies and the Freestar Collective. But they still exist. I was born in the great city of Dazra, and raised with the teachings of Jinan Varun. I underwent the rite of Krejar when I came of age. I am of the promised, those who know the truth of the great serpent and his inevitable return. Neat. <laughs> I hope this isn't one of those now I have to kill you scenarios. I don't care about your past. That sounds really impressive. Or I can't believe you didn't tell me this until now. Um, I don't know, man. That's That does sound impressive to my character. Thank you. I doubt many would see it that way. There is a reason that I am only just revealing this now. Several years ago, I intercepted requests from Constellation to access Varun's space, speaking only of exploration. I was sent to infiltrate Constellation posing as a former smuggler looking for a new purpose in life. Whoa. I've always wanted to meet a spy. I thought there was more to you than you let on. That makes you an undercover agent, or so you lied. Yeah, it sounds like you're an undercover agent. That was the intent, yes. The reality is more complicated. 
Several weeks after I arrived, I attempted to access secure records within Constellation's archives. Vladimir and Sarah were waiting for me. I see. You're still here, so it couldn't have been that bad. Or they weren't as gullible as you'd hoped. That must have been a surprise, or they didn't trust you. Seems like a good call on their part. I mean, yeah, you're still here, so it couldn't have been that bad, right? I had no idea what to think. I was horrified. My failure would be reported to the High Council, and the penalty would be severe. We could say, what information were, are you sending to House Varun? House Varun knows about the artifacts then. I'm guessing you haven't told anyone else this, so you're actually a double agent, or I'm not surprised Sarah's a good person. Um, what, what information are you sending to House Varun? The history of Constellation, where expeditions are sent, data on star systems House Varun has not explored, some information on their members and goals, as you have seen, there is relatively little that would be considered classified. I, I take it House Varun knows about the artifacts then? They do not. Hmm. I have, for now, kept that information to myself. You and I have spent so much time together. It has been increasingly difficult to keep this from you. And I am sorry for that. Telling you this violates so many of the orders I was given. But it was the right thing to do. I can feel that. Let's see. You're still just Andresia as far as I'm concerned. You didn't trust me with any of this. That's hard to accept. Or that's a lot to absorb. Uh, I mean, this is a lot to absorb, frankly. I know. I understand that this may change what you think of me. I know that you may no longer wish to associate with me. I believe that in this moment, honesty is more important than anything. No matter what happens next, I have appreciated the time with you, and I thank you for trusting me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Andreja. <laughs> Sheesh. House Varun. Wow. Craziness. Yeah. Um, my character's going to think about that for a little bit. He's going to think about it. Again, I don't think that House Varun really had much of an impact on him growing up. So I don't think he probably, you know, thinks as badly of House Varun as probably most people do. And plus, she seems cool. And my character likes her, so that means House Varun can't be that bad, right? If she's a member. And it sounds like she's, like, a high-standing member. That's even cooler. So we'll see how this story goes. But for now, we are supposed to go and meet Delgado. But... I also need to look around for evidence. So before I go upstairs, we're going to explore this area down here and uh, see if we don't find any more evidence. Um, interesting that that's loading screen place. Before we go in there, we'll just look around out here some more. Uh, maybe we'll talk to some people like the doctor in here. In the clinic. History of the Pirates. Have I seen this? The 1724 work, A General History of the Pirates, is a first-hand account of the lives and adventures of several swashbucklers who plied their trade in the Caribbean during the so-called Golden Age of Piracy. It was supposedly written by one Captain Charles Johnson, but there's no evidence that such a per person actually existed. Instead, most people attribute the book to Daniel Defoe, famed author of Robinson Crusoe, writing under a pen name. The following is an excerpt. Chapter 3 of Captain Teach, alias Blackbeard. Edward Teach was a Bristol man born, but had sailed some time out of Jamaica in privateers in the late French War. Yet, though he had often distinguished himself for his uncommon boldness and personal courage, he was never raised to any command till he went to pirating, 
which I think was at the latter end of the year 1716, when Captain Benjamin Hornigold put him into a sloop that he had made prize of, and with whom he continued in consortship till a little while before Hornigold surrendered. In the spring of the year 1717, Teach and Hornigold sailed from Providence for the main of America and took in their way a billop from the Havana with 120 barrels of flour as also a sloop from Bermuda. Thurber Master, from whom they took only some gallons of wine and then let him go, and a ship from Madeira to South Carolina, out of which they got plunder to a considerable value. After cleaning on the coast of Virginia, they returned to the West Indies and in the latitude of 24 made prize of a large French guinea man bound to Martinico, which by Hornigold's consent Teach went aboard of as captain and took a cruise in her. Hornigold returned with his sloop to Providence where at the arrival of Captain Rogers, the governor, he surrendered to mercy pursuant to the King's proclamation. Fascinating. Well, looks at this. We could uh, help ourselves to recon stem. It's free. Free sample. What's up? Uh, let's chat. First time visiting the infirmary, huh? Let me give you a piece of advice. Okay. Try not to get into too many bar fights. I'm trying to save my dwindling supplies for sale and pirates coming in off of raids. Um, are you a real doctor? I've done my time, but thanks to a malpractice suit, I've officially dropped the doctor title. Don't let that worry you. I'm still just as good, if not better, than half the surgeons at the clinic. I see. Um, I could say the only medical supplies I'll ever need are the kind that get me zoned. Uh, or you don't have to worry about me. I'm practically bulletproof. Yeah, I, I do feel rather bulletproof. Or my character does anyway. <laughs> That's what they all say. Until they stumble in bleeding out on my floor. So here's what's what. You need med packs, curatives, preventatives. I've got you covered. At least as long as my current supply holds out. You need enhancers, legal or illegal? I've got those too. Hmm. You sell illegal chems in a med bay? In the fleet, someone has to do it, so it may as well be me. This way, I've got a good idea of who's on what and how much. If they come in for any real medical treatment, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. Well, you sound like a well-rounded chem dealer. A dealer with a full medical background. Thank you very much. Now, if you don't need anything else, I've got a particularly annoying supply issue to deal with. Really? Um... Well, before I say this, I bet being a medic on the key keeps you pretty busy. You'd think most of the injuries I treat are from run-ins with security or civilians taking a stand. But I'd say at least half are just life on the key. Brawls, egos, and plain old stupidity. At least it keeps me busy. Okay. Um, well, I mean, maybe I could help out with your supply issue? Now there's an offer I didn't expect. If you really want to help, I'm looking for someone who can handle themselves in a public setting. As in someone who knows how to get the job done without shooting up the place. Uh-huh. Oh. Hmm. What about the medical supplies on the Regana, the ship that we were just on? Uh, I didn't say I'd do it for free. Or, I find shooting up the place gets the job done much faster. Or you can count on me for that. Eh, hmm, I don't like any of these. Um, oh, the Regana. No? They gave us some medical supplies. So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to stay away from doing actual pirate work because I don't, I, I don't think my character is going to want to do that. You know, I mean, he's willing to try to infiltrate and maybe at some point he will have to do some pirating, but... I don't need anything. I do have other patients. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he grew up hating pirates. So I don't think that he would be so quick to just do some pirating. Um, but, yeah, well... Jeez. Ah, um, what about the medical supplies on the Regatta? That's not going to help. Hmm. That ship was full of things like cots, flu shots, and children's vitamins. And I can't exactly plug a bullet wound with an Ashta chewable. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I didn't say I'd do it for free. 
Do you really think I'd be offering you a job without pay? This isn't my first rodeo. I politely requested a list of supplies from Gennady Aiton at the clinic and was told the price of business has gone up. I think he's back on Aurora and he's upcharging me to pay for it. And if there's one thing I'm not going to do is subsidize his habit. I want you to make sure he delivers my supplies for the price we agreed on, but without raising any alarms. Hmm. <laughs> Why don't we just steal supplies from somewhere else? If he doesn't cooperate, I hope he responds well to threats, or you'll get those supplies and no one will get hurt. Um, I am curious, though. Why don't you just steal the supplies? Oh, we will. But this <laughs> way, I'm guaranteed the highest quality supplies from one of the best medical facilities in the settled systems. Plus, if Gennady does what he's supposed to do, he'll cover our tracks. All right. Well, fine. I'll get the supplies and no one will get hurt. We'll see. Talk is one thing. Actions are another. Uh, so, did, uh, Gennady give a reason for the price change? A bullshit one, yeah. <laughs> Gennady claims prices have gone up for the clinic as a whole, and that I'm not the only doc being hit. He says if I want cheaper goods, I'm going to have to find another supplier. He even gave me a list. But I'm not turning to some third-rate doc selling meds out of their space truck. Gennady and I had a deal, and I want him to honor it. Do you think he really does have an Aurora habit? Oh yeah. The funny thing is, he's the poster boy for upstanding moral citizens. Top of the class at nursing school, did volunteer work in backwater settlements, a reputation you could eat your food off of. Nobody knows he did it all zoned out of his mind. Nobody except his old boss, me. He said he got clean when he joined the clinic, but now I wonder. Uh -huh. Well, listen, I could use some medical supplies. Sure. Whatever keeps you off my operating table. Let's see what she's got. Oddly, she has a throwable. A shrapnel grenade. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I like to buy some uh, med packs. She's only got one. I like to buy trauma packs, of which she has seven. And, um... Panacea cures everything. And somebody in the comments mentioned that this is the only thing they keep and buy as Panacea. And I actually really like that idea. So I might just start doing that. Just, just buying Panacea from everybody when I see it. I mean, I could even like, you know, sell her this other aid that I don't necessarily need. I have eight Panaceas and I don't feel like I really cure this stuff all that much. Um, but, um, interesting. Does this, holy cow, I have 160 med packs. <laughs> do I really? I have 116 med packs. Why do I have latkes here? I guess I pick some things up to eat and never ate them. Try not to die out there. Oh, okay. I'll try. All right. Let's see if there's any, uh, um, evidence in here. I don't think we're going to find any in here. Closed. Huh, interesting. We'll go in there in a bit. Zuri's Essentials. Huh. Hey, what's up, Zuri? Supply shelf. She won't mind if I look around a little bit. Oh, zero wire. I mean, I could take it. They don't care. They don't care at all. Oh, the trade authority. Need something. Need something. Right now, I'm just looking for tablets or whatever. Broke. Uh-huh. Another closed place. Yeah, we're probably not going to find anything down here in the shops. Probably find stuff up on the bridge or wherever Delgado is. We will visit Delgado in the next episode. It's time for me to end this one. This is kind of cool. This is not what I was expecting at all. It's kind of neat, and it's going to be an interesting tightrope walk to see if I can do this without turning into a pirate myself. We'll see. 
Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode. I hope you had a good time. If you did have a good time, why don't you let me know? Leave me a like or a comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.